See if we get this thing going. Just making sure I'm getting some stuff set up. Looks like could be going. Who knows? Good morning, good morning. Can you hear me all right? Just trying to see if this, it's been a little while since I've, it's been a spell, as they say. It's been a spell since I've streamed. So just making sure everything's all set up. Do you hear any music? It may just be me hearing the music. Gonna send this out on the social medias real quick. We're getting there. Good morning. <laughs> hey, how's it going? The music is a little too loud. Okay. Did this change anything with the music? You let me know if that's if that's changing anything with the music. If not, good morning. Happy Russian Soviet Army March music to everyone. <laughs> this is jazz. This isn't. This isn't a. Russian Soviet army music. This is big band jazz. <laughs> Can is the music too loud right now, or is it doing okay? Hi all. Just getting a little settled here, trying to to share things, I guess. if I can do any of this. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just giving up on this sharing thing. Ha, huh, model looks great. How are you doing? Um, are you going to make its lower body? Probably not. I mean, I could. 
I guess I could make the lower body, but probably not. This is more just for for funsies and to just kind of mess around. Um, maybe take this into key shot and do like a, a beauty render is kind of the the idea right now. Let me know if the music is too loud or not loud enough. One more social media post. This is embarrassing. Oh my goodness. But you guys get to be a part of the story, so. Hey, come join me on ZBrush Live! Woo woo! And then I just do a link. <laughs> Pixel logic. Done. into my stories okay that's it music level is okay now and I can hear clear in every sound okay good beautiful okay so this is this is more or less where I left off um, many moons ago when I last streamed in June I took July off I'm I'm doing a new tutorial series that should be out soon I think um, and if you don't know that I do tutorials on the side like I do some tutorials on the side you can find more information here at gumroad.com slash the red or just redbeard gumroad.com slash redbeard same shameful self plug huh. anyways I do some in-depth character design creation tutorials and very similar to the processes that I show over here but I go more in depth. Hey, Victor, how's it going? So let's add in my reference that I'm working on. If I can find my reference. Aha. So this was just the result of a sketch. I do morning sketches every day either at like a coffee shop or just at work um, before I start. It kind of helps me warm up. Um, oh, thank you. Cool spl splart. Cool's part. Is it cool splart spart or cool's art? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, gonna stop. I'm just going to start sculpting. So this is where we left off. Um, I felt pretty good about that. I'm going to turn on my... Um, perspective, but I like to tone it down just a little bit. And I can start fleshing this guy out some. You know, I think right now the hands are feeling good. I mean, there's no thumbs. Don't tell anyone that there's no thumbs. But there, there's no thumbs. So, ugh. don't tell the thumb police. He'll good about where the teeth are eyes are feeling okay actually I'm gonna do just a little subtle change to the eyes right now I'm just gonna have the eye the iris kind of mimic the shape of the eyeball He's got an old 2D technique. Just to kind of give a little bit more personality to this sculpt. So let me know if you guys have any questions along the way. I'm just going to start kind of sculpting on this just to feel it out. I've been 
I've been pretty busy these past. I mean, July was exceptionally busy. Not only is it like summer and my kids want to do stuff. Isn't that weird that they want to do stuff? Um, but I've been prepping for the Lightbox Expo. Does anybody know what the Lightbox Expo is? I do. <laughs> um, the Lightbox Expo is a cool little shindiggery. Um, that it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty rad. They're like the biggest artists from all over the world are coming, um, and I've been lucky enough to. Well, I mean lucky enough. I mean I I applied to to do a table down there and got accepted and. Um, which is weird because I've never had a table at any kind of convention before. Oh, he's totally going to pick something tasty like, oh boy, a pie. <laughs> he's wearing his I love pie hat. <laughs> his conspiracy pie hat, of course. Um, anyway, so I've been prepping. I've been doing a lot of prep as I've never done a convention before. So I needed to get, you know, my booth ready sell something at the booth. I s still am debating on what I'm selling at this booth. Um, but it should be a good time. Also working like full-time job in between. And, you know, making sure everyone in my house is happy. It's been... It's been a busy but a good summer. This guy, hmm, this guy looks like startled with luck, and star luck uh, looks like I can't read. Oh my gosh. This guy looks like Starlet with luck and happiness, or is he forced to work at McDonald's? He is probably forced to work at McDonald's as well, but just really genuinely enjoys it. That's Ah, he looks shocked. There we go. Startled. Shocked in a positive way. <laughs> yes. But there's some cool things going down at the Lightbox um, Expo. I'm going to be doing a... Um, booth there, as I've said, but on top of that, I'm going to be having, um, I'm going to be doing a live demo at the, at the Wacom table, uh, or the Wacom room, or whatever. I'm going to be doing a live kind of demo where I'm going to go over again um, some processes that I use and and revealing a new character that I've been fiddling around with. Um, um, I also will be taking part of a panel with some other amazing 3D artists. Um, so that's going to be great. And so it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of exhausted already from all the prep work. I mean, stuff is coming in. I've got business cards. New business cards are on my way, on their way. I've got red beard hats. Oh my gosh. Red beard hats. I could give this guy a red beard hat. Um, pencils, pins. A new tutorial will be out. So it'll. It's been a lot of great work getting out there. So this is a one way that I really like to block in hair is just kind of block out big chunks. Work with my Dynamesh, but actually turn on polish. And then it kind of starts dictating itself. And then I can go in and kind of define some of these clumps.
Mm. Just trying to see how this looks if I pull out a few of these hair clumps. I actually think I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I still like these hair clumps, but I'm just going to maybe handle them just a little bit differently. Got this hairbrush I made a long time ago. Kind of in the style of the Dylan Ekron hairbrush, but a little bit different. So this is just a simple um, insert mesh that has some taper to it. When I hit, you know, subdivide, it keeps its creases really well. And then I've turned on elastic um, to the brush settings. This is just going to help, you know, I can manipulate this a little bit more freely and not worry too much about working the brush. Oops. Maybe even change the brush. What is the expo gonna? Where is the expo gonna be at? The expo is gonna be at uh, the Pasadena Convention Center in California, and it's in September seventh through the ninth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yeah, seventh through eighth and ninth. And I mean, it's gonna be awesome. Like, they, it's it's cool to me because you know I've done. I've done a bunch of different conventions over the years. Um, I mean, I've been to a bunch of different conventions. This is the only one that I've actually, like, going to be, like, participating in. Like, I mean, table-wise. The only one that I'll be tabling at. Um, but it's cool because normally there's not a big 3D artist presence at these. And this one, I've found that there's just amazing, amazing 3D artists that are going to come, and they're all tabling as well. Like you have a Shane Olson, one of my buddies, and, and also fellow Pixelogic streamer, is going to be down there. Um, Justin Gobi Fields, I believe. I don't know if he has a booth, but he'll be part of that panel with me, which is amazing because he's, he's one of my favorite 3D artists. He's so talented. Um, uh, Peter Sandeman, he was a really, really amazing, talented 3D artist. He's going to be down there. Um, Matthias, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his last name or remember his last name, but he's another, yet another, like, incredibly talented 3D artist. He'll be there too. So it's, it's going to be really cool to see the amount of 3D talent that will be there. Um, and it's just, you know, 
I'm I'm always like a big nerd at these things because I just like I love meeting the artists behind behind the work. And so having like an opportunity to to do this, like it'll be cool to have a booth there, yeah. But it's more cool to me to be able to interact and like meet some of these these artists that I you know have followed online for a while or or have had a relationship online. You know, there's a lot of really good 2D artists too that are, are going to be there. I mean, th the best 2D artists in the world are all going to be there. So it's it's going to be really cool. I mean, you name any artist and pretty much they're going to be there. And not just 2D like character artists, but environment artists, fine painters. It's just, it's amazing. It's going to be awesome. Hair is all about the overlap. Good hair. This elastic brush feature, I think it was for 2018, but it has turned into one of my favorite settings, like one of my favorite new features that ZBrush has done, where you can actually like take this curve and pull it out and smooth it out or add curve to it like twist it it's really powerful And then just with that elastic feature, just able to to grow and, and use the brush how I want. It's really powerful. If I want a little twist here, I just hover over the, the curve and then just hold control and drag up and down. And I can put just a little bit of twist in it, left and right, I guess, as well. I'm here to find out what really happened to JFK. Oh man, there is a great conspiracy. I don't know how much like I can say about this conspiracy because it's like running deep, but there was a, a really interesting conspiracy. And let me again preface this conspiracy that like, this is not what I believe, but it is a very interesting conspiracy. Um, Lucas. Hi, Matt. Your Gumroad tutorial started me in ZBrush. Thank you, big fan. Hey, thank you so much for taking, you know, using my tutorials. I actually, that's the biggest compliment that I can hear. So thank you. I'm, I'm hopefully they've been a benefit to you. Um, I love making them. I've got some more. I'm working on one right now that I'm hoping to release fairly soon. Um, so thank you for your support. Uh... You posted on Twitter about some in influential group, and then he got ghosted. <laughs> um, yes, he did. That's exactly what happened. No, there's a there's a really interesting theory that like it it involves you know the big Illuminati, and where it starts to fall apart for me is that. Um, that it's was George like it runs all the way up to like George to the Bush family and that George Bush was you know at that time as some he wasn't obviously president was he no 
Um, but it like run up, it ran all the way up to like the bushes, and it was like, well, I don't know if that's like the mastermind. If the Illuminati is like this brilliant mastermind group, then <laughs> I don't know. If the bushes are <laughs> gonna be <laughs> the head of that mastermind group. <laughs> Nothing against the bushes, they're great. <laughs> but that's a whole, I mean, it, it, there's so many layers to that. Um, the, the JFK assassination is is very interesting um being that i'm not i'm not completely convinced that it wasn't more than one man i mean i'm i'm fairly positive that it was probably more than one man just because the amount of shots that were taken um and you know, the, the types of talks that he was having at that time were making a lot of groups really upset. Like he was he was a really um, he was really pushing towards kind of world peace and world inclusion and you know, really a lot of great things but make some people really could make some people really upset. Um, so I don't know, that one's a that one's a a tricky one. Um, what about tutorial? What, what, huh, huh? Yes, there's a conspiracy that I'm making another tutorial, which is true. It should, I'm in the last stages of it, which means that, that most of the recording is done, that a lot of the, all the editing up until this point is done, so it's ready to release as soon as, like, the final video is filmed. So it should be done by before the end of the month is my goal. Which means before the light box before the light box um convention is is here I should be done with that. Um this reminds me, I'm from Germany. Can we talk about tanks, beers, booze, please? <laughs> ah, sure, why not? <laughs> George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush was a consular official to China, but I thought he was during the Nixon administration. Yeah, he was. This is like when George W. Like, th this is like the, the things that relate towards Bush was not he, it wasn't him that was in office or in any form of power, but it was his family, like his George Bush's dad, George Senior's dad, um, was in was in with this group or something. I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to find it and maybe post it on one of my personal streams because I'm sure Pixel Logic doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I guess they keep asking me <laughs> to do these streams, so maybe they do enjoy a nice hunk of conspiracy. <laughs> but the guy that that talks about it, I mean, he goes, he has definitely done his research. Like he's he's not just like he's not obviously saying, "Oh, this is quick to this is just the bushes." Um, So, but also, I mean, this is a good week 
for conspiracy. Like, I mean, besides like being really depressed about life with this, um, what's his name, dude, committing suicide in prison. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, that's the dude's name. Um, which is, I'm, I'm of the the sort that he definitely committed suicide because the stuff that he was wrapped up in and and the uh, the amount of information and people that he was connected to, like, I think he definitely committed suicide. I don't think someone killed him. I think he definitely committed suicide, but. Was that by choice? <laughs> um, like, did did he? <laughs> how do I say this? Did was he like okay? Well, you can commit suicide, or we can, you know, do other things to make you pay, type of thing. So I'm definitely of the sorts that yeah, he definitely he committed suicide but was he was there a lot of pressure to commit suicide yeah i think there there probably was quite a bit um ooh there's some stuff coming in man i just finished your advanced zbrush course i noticed there was that it was practically two different approaches. I found the advanced technique easier than the beginner technique. I wonder if it's, um, yeah, that's that's an interesting thought. Um, so that there's a reason why my ed, my beginner technique is maybe a little technically harder than my advanced technique, and it's not so much that you're get. You're, I mean, you're getting pretty much the same results by two, di two very different techniques. But with the, the beginner technique, I'm trying to enforce the design principles that are needed for good character design. And so it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more, um, maybe it's a lot more, it's a slower approach for sure. And if that was on purpose is because I, I didn't want people to get rushed into heavy poly modeling too quickly. I want you to, to focus on like key essential design elements such as shapes, silhouette, balance, you know, the things that we go over really heavily in, in the advanced course that I talk about, but we would just really focus on the basics, the bare minimum of those. So once you are comfortable understanding those principles, then doing you know, the advanced course where I'm, you know, streamlining a lot of things and speeding things up um, is is fully intentional to to now, like, now that you have your understanding, let's grow that understanding and see how we can use that in a, in a more practical manner type of thing. I hope, I hope that makes sense. I think I'm using one of the hairbrushes I made specifically for that course. Um, I wonder, I wonder, is it usually for U.S. NAS to talk about dead people? What? Because I'm told, because I'm old and I know so much bad stuff about the U.S. presidents from Elson, or from Hoover to Clinton. Um, every rule of politician, everything happens by choice, either of your own choice or someone else's. 
Yes. You know, that's uh, I the the interesting thing is like unless you're you're doing your homework, you know, we're not talking about the bad, the ugly side of of politics very often. But, you know, there's not I don't know if there's very many like just learning the basics about how to get into politics and how much like well if you want if you want your bill to pass you have to do this for so and so and this for so and so and like it's kind of I it just it's a broken system and I'm glad that I don't have to be a part of it I really don't like talking politics I love talking conspiracy because that's that's fun to me um, mainly because it doesn't have to be real it can just be like a cool story and, and interesting how things overlap so my wife and I were having a similar conversation the other day of like you know, people who have been extremely influential um, over history and over time and then also have, like, really seedy, dark um, parts of their, of their story and, like, can, um, can a good person or can a can we just focus on the good pers the good parts of a person, or does it always have to be intermingled with the bad? I don't know where we ended up with that. Um, but it was an interesting thought. Hello. It could be fake, like the moon landing. Like the moon landing was definitely fake. Um, am I gonna go? By the way, or am I giving? Am I going to give this guy a leather black belt or a cheap plastic one? Oh man, this guy goes with a nylon belt for sure. One that has just a loop, and you just thread it around. Ooh, let's do a cool thing. We're going to go into... Um, I don't know if this is technically allowed on uh, the ZBrush stream, but I'm going to be using Adobe Creative Cloud Illustrator. <laughs> I just want to make a quick iHeartPi logo. Create a new template. Um, let's see, how do you make the pie? Okay, let's see if I can do this. I pie. Times New Roman, of course. Hey, 
How do I usually like to render? Are you under exclusive bond and oath to UE4 these days? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, who doesn't love UE4? <laughs> um, you know, I I love actually. I think UE4 is is kind of proving a case that how powerful instant rendering, like real-time rendering, can be. So it's nice to see that kind of pick up some steam. Um, I, But when I'm just doing, like, quick and dirty work, I mean, this, like, this will be kind of quick and dirty work. What I'll do is I'll render in Keyshot. I really like rendering in Keyshot. Um, they keep updating their software and, and doing some really powerful powerful stuff that makes it so I don't have to do anything. <laughs> so when I'm just messing around like and not caring too much about um, I'm not caring too much about about topology or, or things like that, and I just want to take something and um, render it. Give a little arc to this. Just a little. Now we'll do a save as. This in my pie guy. Pie. And then we're going to use one of ZBrush's cool thingy things. Um, hello, Artavella. Or is it Artavella? Why am I using Illustrator? Shh. Shh. I'm not using Illustrator. That didn't happen. If. <laughs> Italian folk music. <laughs> so what I did is I just created an Illustrator file that says I love Pi. Um, and now I'm bringing this in and using the 3D text and vector shapes. And I'm going to import this new SVJ file that I made. The Pi SVJ. And so if I go and check this out. See, it's still a little choppy, but I want this to be a little smoother so I can crank up the resolution just a little bit. And it's all real time. This is also one of the great plugins that ZBrush has done. Let me go a little bit more. And then I'm going to throw a bevel to it, just a little bit of a bevel. Maybe just a teach more. Yeah, yes. And so I have this cool, like, really nice thing that I can now plop. Plop is, like, I think my new favorite word. It's not really a word, but I like using it. Now I can just put this on this guy's hat. And I can even use like a cool deformer, like a bend arc deformer. If I know how to use these cones correctly. That's not the right way, let's see. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to use, instead of this, I'm just going to use their deformer. Deformer. Crank up the... Aha. There we go. Oh, 
Funky topology. You know what? Before I do this, then I'm gonna use ZBrush's Z Remesher and see if I can fix that topology. Let's do a quick save. Am I gonna be at the ZBrush Summit? Um, currently, I don't think so. I want to go, but hmm, I I don't know. Right now, if I can make it work, I will make it work, and I'd love to be there. Um, right now, I don't know. Keep groups. Oh, I gotta turn off mirror. Or I can just do this. I can actually just. Bevel is the way. <laughs> Let's see if I can just do a freeze, detect edges, and zero brush to this. Now if I hit D, oh, it got real wonky in this one. Just smoothing out some of this weird topology that I got. Close. Mm, and we'll do weld points. Close hole. Polygroups. That's good enough. Okay, now let's do that deformer. I was got an I love I was got an I love pie hat. What a great thing. Oh my gosh, he loves pie so much. Don't we all? Um Freeze edges, freeze edges, kind of works. But I just man, I just selected that um, the faces that I wanted to retopologize or a Z remesh, and then and then just ran a Z remesh on those. That worked pretty well. Um, this is a preview of the hat that I'll be selling at at uh, the thing. What is it called? The thing, the Lightbox Expo.
It's 5.30 in the morning there. <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks for joining us. Um, ooh, the Threadripper. Yes. That is actually... So I just have the Xeon... Or not the... The Risen 1800X, which is awesome. It's, it does a great thing, but I'm going to be upgrading to the Threadripper very soon. Get 36 core processor and... I'll probably upgrade my video card too because Keyshot just announced that they'll actually support GPU rendering as well. So I'd like to do some tests of like what handles better with what. So Check something real quick. I think we're okay. Dynamesh these together. Just start creating that shirt underneath. And then zero mesh this at something low that I do not want symmetry on. Man, I love Zero Mesher. Nice sculpt of Paul. <laughs> I think he'd like that. Does it look like Paul? <laughs> this 
This is where we're gonna do some some tricky stuff. Let's see. Yeah, that works. I'm going to grab a glass of water real quick, and I'm, I will be right back. Let's frame this guy up, and we'll also do some shameless self-promoting. What's up? Okay, I'll be right back. Right back. I'm back. Here we go. Um, so I keep hearing this rumbling, like my f not. I feel this rumbling as I'm sculpting. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear. Like every like few minutes, is like, brrr, brrr. like you can see my lights, even a little bit shake back here. <laughs> um, but apparently they're just doing some construction on a road behind me. And that is what the dealio is. So what I'm doing is I'm making his shirt, like his buttons, where his buttons will come out. Um, and I'm just using, this will be a Z remesher brush, where I'll just take this and do a polygroup all and extrude, or Q mesh, or Q model, or what is this, Q, yeah, just a Q mesh. And then I can add in a couple loops, whoa, whoa there, maybe just here. Then, ooh, this is pretty tricksy. Because I don't actually want it to be like full. I just want it to feel like that on one side. So, something I can do. I'm going to mask partial loop. just 
remove this and taper it down. Haven't I been working on this for a while now? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I've been working on it three... I think this is my fourth session on this. I don't work on this outside of the ZBrush stream, and I haven't streamed for a month and a half or so. So... And I'm always a slower sculptor when I... Uh, when I'm talking, so maybe I should just stop talking and say, Matt, get back to it. Give this guy some buttons, I guess. But thanks for checking in on me. Um, I don't know what this link is. I've got to check it out. <laughs> Bridge Farm <laughs> remembrance. <laughs> I don't know if I get that reference. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I just it's something that um, that I've I've been really picky about ever since doing you know the Disney Infinity characters was like having clean clean topology and just finding out like how beneficial that is to your final sculpt. Uh, hmm, your references is an episode from the Family Guy on Earth. Ah. <laughs> I miss Family Guy. I used to watch Family Guy all the time. Um, 
I don't know if I ever got into American Dad or what was the other one? I don't, I don't think I ever got into that as much. Um, but I did love Family Guy. Actually, one of my favorite, I don't know why this is making me think of it. It's probably because it's like pe things that people haven't watched. <laughs> um, one of my favorite TV series ever made is called News Radio. I don't know if anyone out there, if anyone out there has seen News Radio or knows what News Radio is, I'd be so impressed. You guys would be my favorite people in the world. Um, but it had just some of the funniest, wittiest writing. <laughs> the morning coffee kicks in. <laughs> But it was just about like a little tiny um, news team and just hijinks, hijinks would happen. I'm going to just merge these all together. Yeah. But her parks and wreck. Oh, what's Parks and Rec? <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, the Art of Bella, I don't know who you are, but I'm sure we'll be good friends. If you like Parks and Rec, you would love, look up News Radio. I'm sure that there's some episodes on you on the YouTubes or something, but it is hilarious. It is some of the funniest TV that was ever made. Um, uh, I, I, can't, I can't even start. There's so many good characters and Joe Rogan's in it. You guys do you guys know who Joe Rogan is? He was he was in it. Um, Phil Hartman was that was like his show that he was in before his wife killed him. Um, and then they canceled after shortly after his his death. Um, oh man. Jimmy James, Matthew Brock. It's great. <laughs> Ron Swanson is God. Ron Swanson is the epitome of the perfect person. So I just dynameshed this bad guy to, together. Um, again, this is probably not something that I would do in a real, like if I was going to, a real polished sculpt, but because this is just kind of a funsy project. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about what the topology really looks like, as long as I get the detail I want. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to zero mesh this. And let's see. Check out my groups here. Maybe just clean up my groups just a little bit.
got some groups. Maybe another group here. Another group here. And then keep groups. Smooth groups. Target can be a lot lower. Um, where do I find that close holes function? Yes, it is a geometry. Oh, it's regarding this. I'll show you right now. Um, Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, I saw this. That was one of the best things ever made. That's what the internet is for. change my smoothness down just a little bit and bring up that just a little bit but yeah it's in geometry modify topology close holes but I've got it in my um, my UI right here <laughs> that honestly that's what the internet is for <laughs> it's just <laughs> just to put Ron Swanson's face on the full house cast. <laughs> hmm, okay, let's see some problems here. Okay, let's see if that does the job. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's turn off this Gumroad sign. How embarrassing. And let's change the music. Now that is some topology I can sculpt on. Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. So to get it back to where it was, I'm going to subdivide it up a little bit and just do a projection on the high from what I had. Huzzah, I can delete that high. I'm going to do another save. Okay, so now that I have this, I can kind of sculpt in that other detail that I have. It's the elbows. Kind of bring everything back so I can see what I have. Fingernails, eyeballs. Ooh, I have an outer eyeball. That's cute. It's been a while since I've worked on this guy. Figure out, like, um, 
what I have a tongue, a hat, some her blocking the teeth. I love pie. <laughs> but now I can just take this and use this SK. These SK brushes um, are really, really powerful that I like using. And I'll just do some tension folds. Sometimes sculpting like complex folds is one of the most frustrating things to do, but it's also like kind of therapeutic. <laughs> I don't know if anyone gets that way with their sculpts of like, oh, this is a very therapeutic session that I had today. I get that way. Um, like, you know, doing work which I can't talk about, but, you know, you're working on, on some things. And sometimes, you know, just it's just life as a professional artist. You're not always creating new content. Sometimes you're just, like, cleaning up content. Um, I was doing a lot of cleanup for a while, and I'm just, like, you know, would find myself kind of depressed <laughs> over, over uh, and not knowing, well, actually not knowing why, like, you know, it never in any of this would I was I really feeling not satisfied with my job as I was actually feeling you know really satisfied with my job but the, just the wear of not creating new things and like I, I wasn't you know doing too much at home um, and then realizing that like I hadn't sculpted anything in a really long time and then doing a sculpt <laughs> and like, oh my gosh, this is what it's like to, to be happy again. <laughs> Um, find it relaxing and stressful at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, and the cool thing, like, <laughs> I that's exactly what it is. It's just like, I don't know why, but it is yet it's stressful and <laughs> and relaxing mainly like when you get in a really good groove and you like things just start coming together you know you find these natural rhythms and these natural breaks
so clean. I don't know if this is so clean, but it's not dirty. Just thinking about what I want to spend my time doing today. I think I could probably finish him. You know, just get him to the point where I'm like, ah, this is good. <laughs> this is good enough. Any dreams of working on my own long form project? Um, I've always had daydreams ideas in the back of my mind that I'd love to work. Um, I think as an artist, like that's always the, the big dream. Um, yes, I have some ideas of, of what I would like to do. I don't know if right now is, is necessarily the time of, of, to start doing it. Maybe it is. Maybe that's like me just like, don't, maybe I'm, you, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do a sucker kind of thing. Um, so, yes, I, I, I do have, I do have those. Um, split hidden. Okay, we're going to try something. Let's clean up this just a little bit. I don't need my old hands. Delete. Delete. Now I just have new hands. Gonna take a duplicate of this. Duplicate and this hand. Let's merge these together merge down now the thing that I want that's going to be hard is I want to oops to combine these without losing like the indi individual fingers so I have to do some some finagling. Delete my lower subdivision. Delete hidden. a little bit. Um, let's zero mesh this, keep target, let's see how we do. With this,
So that keeps my topology more or less um, usable. And then I can quickly just kind of sculpt out and define this wrist a little bit better. And then I can do actually I want to subdivide this up three times and then just mask these portions out. Just project the high. That feels good. And I just need to kind of again smooth this detail back out. And now I have a wrist to this weird hand. Yay! No definition for that real hand, so don't don't get don't look too close. They still don't have a thumb. I don't know if I'm gonna make thumbs. I don't think that's the point of this is to make thumbs. Let's do the same with this other one. Duplicate that. Merge it down. Okay, feel good about that. And then <laughs> delete hidden, select this. Hidden. Oh, delete geometry, delete lower.
not quite what I wanted. just fine and then I can keep groups and Z remesh this streetwise you continuing this guy from last time yes your sound is a bit low on my end for some reason um, like it my voice sounds low or the music sounds low I can get the music real low the mic is low is the mic low for everyone? Just a quick question. Do I sound low? How's this? So any better? Oh, now that's a wrist. Oh, you thought it was just me. No! Am I really low right now? Can you hear me? Here, I'm going to try something. Can Is this better or worse? Oh, but now you can't hear the music. Wait. Can you hear me better? I'm going to wait before I do anything. Yes, that's better, but you can't hear the music. Okay, so let's see here. That's better. Um, music. Now that's going to be tricky. What if? I bet the music is really loud now. Probably louder than I am. <laughs> that music way loud. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um... <laughs> okay, let me try this. Does this... Is this any better? Is that any better? <laughs> Maybe I'll just not do music. I think that might be it. How is this? Is this a better balance? Or is this work? Yes. 10 for 10, she says. Is the music really loud? Or is it not loud? I'm trying to <laughs> find the balance. Seems fine for now. Good volume. Yeah, that's better. Is my I just turned down turned it down a little bit. Let's see if this if you can still if you can still hear me or not. Um, yeah, I've got a new sound card that I'm trying to. It, it works really well with with recording for my tutorials, but it's it's a little bit trickier for streaming. Music is a, is a little low, but at a reasonable volume. Huzzah! That's what we wanted. That's what I like to hear. Projecting some details.
So now let's turn back on everything. See how it all looks together. Tongue, hat, hair. There we go. Yeah, let's see. We're going to try one more thing, see if we can get that music just the right. Let's try that. Okay. Aha, that looks better. Um, that feels good. Perfect. My goodness. Oh, John DeSalm. That was a great tenor sax, John DeSalm. Huge fan of your all your work. Thank you so much. That's that's an extremely kind thing to say. It's it's still a hard thing. I don't know if it's it's this way for all artists, but it's <laughs> I've always really struggled with like uh, taking compliments. Um, because I think I, I suffer from, you know, self doubt. <laughs> um, self esteem issues as it were. But Thank you. I'm just trying to say thank you. Um,
<laughs> you guys are too kind. So one thing I like to do, I mean, I know that I normally like to sculpt out the teeth completely, um, but because this is just kind of a quick sculpt, what I'm going to do is separate the gums and the teeth. And this will be just a little thing, but it will actually um, give a set, because you do see the gums a little bit and you see the teeth, that we can, we can have just a little bit of reality in there. So first thing is like just sculpting, or not sculpting, but masking out around the gums. Some of these teeth are really poorly sculpted, but that's okay. It'll fake that they're good sculpted. Okay, so once I have that, um, all I need to do is make a polygroup out of them and then do a group split. Okay, and then close holes. Oh wow, that's a that's an interesting way to close those holes. Okay, let's try um, doing this. That's one way to do it. Yes. <laughs> this song. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's good. It's romantic. So we're <laughs> setting the atmosphere here to be um, really romantic. <laughs> mm, let's see. Let's think this through just a little bit. Okay, let's see what I did to the teeth here. I've got the teeth separated. If I run the close holes on these gals, kind of the same result, but at least I've got the majority of the definition there. So I can do some, maybe some clip stuff to this.
Let's see what happens if I just diminish this. Now I'm going to lose all that detail. Hmm. Let's go back to my teeth. Okay, there we go. Well, I've got now my teeth and then my gums and teeth. And if I just smooth, maybe sculpt these back so I can hide them. What if I deleted the faces that are in the back of the mouth and you see your mesh head then extrude back? Well, that could be it. That could be a good idea. Um, this may actually work just just fine. What I'm doing here is, is just kind of made a duplicate and then I'm just kind of pushing in um, some of those faces. sculpting these down this looks really good and then I can sculpt up the gums a bit more Then just pull these teeth into the gums just a little bit. And I'm going to see if I can. Oops. Just do a weird lasso select and delete these faces. And just clean it up just a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be fine. No one's gonna see that. That's that's fine. But now I can do some cool stuff like let's add toy plastic. Fill object, and then we're gonna paint this sucker. Same with the teeth, I can paint the teeth. 
teeth just a little bit. Just giving him some like plaque. This is just some some little stuff, but it will actually help help him read just a little bit more and do a mask like cavity. That's probably good enough. Let's turn back on some things and see how it looks. Ah, it was masked. Teeth. Yeah, it's all. He he needs to bl brush and floss, and he's getting old. Like, you know, when your teeth are old and they start grinding away, and you start seeing the internal enamel. That's what he's going. That's what he's going for. Um, conspiracy theory that he needs to brush. No, I think he just is. He's fine. Let's do his tongue too. Um,
That's kind of fun. Um, for a model that does this, does it matter if the eyes are perfectly spherical? For a model like this, no. Like, you can check out his eyes. Because I'm trying to push his eyes a little bit more towards the cartoony side of things, um, this is what his eyes actually look like. They're kind of... They started with spheres and then got molded and pushed to have the kind of bulge. I wanted his eyes to, to bulge a certain way. Um, and so that is is why I, I kind of pushed him this way. Um, let's see what else I have. You have some great workflow. Very interesting to see it all come together. Thank you. Awesome sculpt. Thanks. Uh, how to get SK Airbrush. Um, I'm... I downloaded it from a the ZBrush the the ZBrush Central. It was a it was um part of like a a pack that some the SK I don't know the artist's name, but he had a, he has a whole bunch of artists or uh, pens that or brushes that he used that he gave out for free. Ah, it's John Adams. Hmm. Yes. John Adams, 1963. And now I'm getting all nervous. John Adams is here. <laughs> oh, sweet. Streetwise has the link for the airbrush if it is loud. Yeah, please post it. Please share it. This guy's still pretty low poly. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, let's check this out. I didn't know that he had a gum road up. Ah, uh, neat. He's got a whole thing. Um, I would recommend, and he's got it for free. That's nice. Yes, I I would highly recommend um, checking that out because his brushes are. Very sought after. If you guys don't know who A Cubed is, I think everyone here knows who A Cubed is. A Cubed is Ashley. She is a fantastic sculptor. Um, you should check out. She streamed right before me and did a really cool thing. Um, and didn't mess with the mic. What am I doing here? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ashley, are you going down to the uh, ZBrush Summit? I'm still surprised. I mean, they should be asking. I, I would uh, would hope that they would ask you to do the to the speed sculpt because I think Ashley's one of the most talented speed sculptors that that's out there. I mean, she what she does in like. An hour and a half is what I do in three weeks. You don't have any plans. So much money. Um, let's start a GoFundMe for Ashley. And then after that successful, let's start a GoFundMe for me so I can go down to. <laughs> Everybody loves some good neck folds. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> go fund me for the Pixelogic streamers. <laughs> and thus, news story, the new Pixelogic news story, all new streamers. <laughs> Ashley, I've been talking about some very controversial uh, things today, um, such as who killed JFK. It was you. Okay, let's let's see here. Let's see what happens here. Uh. What's my take on Epstein? So I talked about Epstein for a little bit. And one, I think that, yes, he, he did commit suicide. He didn't, he wasn't killed. But do I think that his that the guards that were watching him didn't turn his their, their backs or allow him to commit suicide because of so much that is going on like was Epstein what's the best way to say like did people come to Epstein and say hey you can either kill yourself or we're going to make other people suffer type of thing you know that maybe he was related to or that's that's where i think some shadiness probably actually happened because he i mean you don't he was doing so much horrible stuff and was connected to so many people in power doing some horrible horrible stuff that yeah that's that's a there is something going on there so yes i think he he killed himself but like he kind of was probably forced to yeah 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 i feel like that that's probably what happened he's the they just let him do it type of thing. I, he's not still alive. I don't think that's true, but I think there are some very powerful people wanting to make sure that he never talked. And so he never talked. You've got a meme for that. There's two things I love. Is memes, conspiracies, and I guess there's three. Vintage WWF wrestling. That's my sweet spot.
Michael Kraft, great rebound by Trumbull. Pass in front to Matt Reeves, the composition, and off of Trumbull and Cole Hill. What's a Thorup? I don't know what a Thorup is. That's a good question. This is the part where I'm just closing my eyes and I'm going to hope for the best. <laughs> Ginger Matt Thor. I don't know if that would be true. He may be dead. From the rumors that I hear is that he's at least dead inside. That's that's probably the truest rumor that I've heard. <laughs> Pre-ordered his new Funko. <laughs> what is that? Ah, oh, the Bret Hart Foundation. <laughs> Who doesn't love Bret Hart? Does Bret Hart have a new Funko design? I legit like am heavy into um, vintage 
WWF, WCW stuff. That's I wasn't joking about that. That's that's a real thing. So Hulkamania runs wild over me. Type of type of stuff is what we're. <laughs> Everyone who's watching wrestling at that time does love it and they miss it. It was a great, it was a golden era of entertainment. Actually, I'm like really into the glow. Glow is what is that what it's called? The uh, the Netflix show about the the female wrestlers. I think it's really great. I really like it a lot. The one thing that I want though is just. Like, give me more wrestling. <laughs> like, I just want him to wrestle more. I'm just going to try some color stuff. This this is probably not going to actually be the final color. Um, but I just want to, to start feeling out some stuff with him. It was great. I still remember, like, I have vivid memories of watching as a kid um, Earthquake versus Jake the Snake and, like, how traumatizing it was because Jake the Snake and Earthquake were kind of like they were n enemies to each other. And um, Jake this because the Earthquake, this giant large human um, was afraid of snakes like that was his bit was he was afraid of of the snakes uh, and Jake the snake who loves snakes that was his bit he'd always come out with his snake in his bag and he'd scare people and they had this match where someone came out and I think they they clubbed they clubbed Jake the snake and knocked him out. And when he was knocked out, no, they didn't. They tied him up in the ropes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, they tied him up in the ropes and he was watching as, 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 uh, someone snuck underneath where he kept the snake. They pulled the snake out and they threw the bag in the middle of the ring and earthquake did this big jump and smashed the bag and i remember as a kid watching this and screaming and crying that they just killed a snake on tv they smushed it and i think inside the bag they had they didn't actually kill the snake preface this that they didn't actually kill the snake in the bag they had like jello packets 
and when when this guy smashed on him, the Jello um, <laughs> exploded and tainted the bag. But like as a kid who doesn't know that wrestling is fake, was like, "Oh my gosh! I just saw this thing die! What is going on?" And just like I was traumatized, and I was so distraught over the thing over that. <laughs> and like I still like think of it to this day. And it, I didn't find out that it was not a real snake until like years later. Yeah, <laughs> it was horrible. But I remember like watching it just vividly, like w not knowing what I had just seen. It was like to that mo in that moment. All of a sudden, I was mortal, and we were not <laughs> like, like mortality entered my world as I realized that we could all die just like this snake. <laughs> oh man, wrestling was good. They knew how to. They knew <laughs> how to how to do entertainment right. Existential <laughs> <laughs> wrestling games. Oh, it was so messed up. Oh yeah, and Jake the Snake had a snake bite Macho Man in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> he bit him on the arm. That was terrifying. And then there was another one. So like my my big the the guy that I liked the most um was the Ultimate Warrior and he had this this fight with the Undertaker. <laughs> and um <laughs> in this fight with the undertaker it was a uh, it was a it was a um, casket match meaning the loser had to be put into a casket um, and so he's fighting the undertaker and the undertaker the ultimate warrior is about to win um, and then someone comes out and, and smacks the ultimate warrior um, <laughs> and <laughs> They throw the Ultimate Warrior into this casket and lock it. They lock the casket. And this is like at the beginning of the episode or something. And then they spend the next like 30 minutes of the episode trying to get him out. They're trying, they're bringing out saws, they're bringing out. Um, drills. They're trying to give him air, and I'm thinking to myself, "He's dying! He's dying! He's losing oxygen!" And they didn't get him out for like a long time. You know, they had different matches going on, but they would keep cutting back to them trying to to, to break this guy out, um, this old the ultimate warrior out of the casket, and and, and finally. They get him out, they open him up, and he's in there, and he's dead. Like, he's not breathing. They're like, he's not breathing! We need to get him to the hospital! And I also just, again, thought I just saw someone die. I just saw they just, he just murdered <laughs> an actual person this time live on air. And he's going to get away with it because he's the Undertaker, and they can't just... They can't just arrest him. He's he's half dead already. <laughs> this is just better TV, I guess. It was just there was just a better age of entertainment that we used to have that. <laughs> I've got so many of those stories. There was another one, because, like, 
the ultimate warrior his bit is that he would call on the warrior gods and they would give him power to wrestle um and <laughs> and what he would so he would his arch nemesis besides like everyone else because they all like circled through his arch nemesis was this voodoo guy that would he was dressed as like a voodoo doctor like a witch doctor and he was like he would go out and do these voodoo voodoo curses and he did some voodoo curse to the ultimate warrior that made him start throwing up all over the place <laughs> <laughs> I just remember watching this Ultimate Warrior like I thought he was dying again. That poor guy, he went through he went through a lot. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I went I went through it too. Papa Shango. <laughs> it wasn't Papa Shango. <laughs> I think that's right. Yes, it was Papa Shango. Oh man. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> Papa Shango. Oh, that's so good. It's been so long, but it's still very dear to my heart. <laughs> So when Macho Man died, um, I remember, you know, like, I haven't watched fight you know, wrestling in a long, long time. Like, I, it's just not, you know, it's not the same. The glory days are over. Um, but I remember when Macho Man died, there were all these, like, things of, like, oh, the best episode or the best moments of Macho Man's career. And I went through and I watched, like, some of those because that's what you do when you when one of your idols dies is you watch <laughs> his highlight wrestling reels <laughs> um and it was like the best like queen elizabeth his his manager his side manager she had left him um because of a dispute because of him and hulk hogan and you know she took hulk hogan's side and things and and there was, she was gone for a long, she was gone for a long while. And he had a new, he had a new like sidekick that they would walk him out and he was fighting some, some person. And I think he lost the match and his hand, his sidekick lady, um, was like super mad at him and like yelling at him and then started beating him up after he lost the match. Um, and this is like, I think this is one of the WrestleManias. And <laughs> he, he's getting beat up by this lady and she was this, this lady that just like, you know, she's black hair. She was the anti-Elizabeth, pretty much. Um, I should do a stylized Papa Shango. <laughs> and so she's he's getting beat up by his his handler is like this new lady gal 
Um, and then from the audience <laughs> jumps out Miss Elizabeth. She runs into the ring and she she hits that the lady who's beating up. She saves um, she saves he, she saves Macho Man. But Macho Man doesn't know what's happened. He just knows he's been beat up and he turns and he's he's about to punch and sees it's it's Miss Elizabeth. And he stops, he looks around, and everyone's cheering. They're like saying, take her back, take her back. Uh, and, <laughs> and then they embrace, like he hugs her, and he lifts her up. And people are freaking out. They're cheering, they're screaming, they pan. There's multiple people that are just full-on bawling watching what has just happened. Um... It's just like the most emotional reconnection that they've ever had. It was so good. I'm like, this this was real to people. It was so real. <laughs> and I liked it. I thought it was great. Anyways, that's my... It's not really conspiracy theory but uh that's good stuff The music died. Um, his new manager was Sherry. Yes. Sherry. Oh. What was it? Sherry. Um, I'm looking this up. because I'm gonna... Sherry Martell. Oh, she was great. I'm going to bring this in because like. She was just the anti, the anti Elizabeth. Oh, she was so good. <laughs> and she would just yell and scream. And like, you know, Miss Elizabeth was like the lady of etiquette and, and sophistication. And this girl was just the opposite. Like that was her role. And it was really entertaining. <laughs> This kind of looks like the Beetlejuice guy. Um, what do I think that is, what do you think they got in Area 51? Probably nothing. Not anymore. <laughs> they lost all the good stuff. Um, I think there's, there's a really cool couple of documentaries out about UFOs. If we're going to switch now subjects to UFOs in Area 51. One, I don't think anything's going to happen in Area, like the, Storm Area 51. Nothing's going to happen. Um, I think that it's a social media. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Oh, this is what we're going to do. And, but I don't I don't actually think anyone's going to show up or do anything, which is a real disappointment because um, they should. Um, but what do I think they have in, in Area 51 now? Um, I don't think they have anything. I, I don't know if they, I think that there is some weird stuff going on in Roswell. Um, not 
not just Roswell, but also the the Phoenix area as well. If you, if you guys have you guys looked into the Phoenix or heard of the Phoenix Lights, that's I, I think actually a little bit more interesting than Roswell. It's like Roswell was a cool. Um, um, it was a cool. What am I trying to say? Uh, the the crash that was reported was a was the cool idea. There, there we go. Um, but I don't know if anything actually happened because you know their their report was so old and and you know very few people reported it in but the phoenix lights i thought were, is a very interesting story um for those of you who don't know what the phoenix light is is that the phoenix lights are um in this in this town in phoenix arizona um there were i think these formation of lights that made like a like a flying V pretty much the inspiration behind behind um, the mighty ducks yeah uh, sorry <laughs> yes the inspiration behind the mighty ducks was was that um, no no Matt, oh, you silly guy. No, what am I saying? Is that they saw these lights, these massive lights that they say were larger than a couple football fields, and it flew over slowly the city of Phoenix. Um, and there's there's hundreds of witnesses to this hundreds and hundreds of witnesses they you know they call in the police they have audio recordings of people calling the police they say the police don't know what it is they're looking into it they call the you know the military base that's close by they don't know what it is but they also are having reports about it um there's just like there's dozens dozens of stuff that that happened hundreds of people saw this um you know the mayor comes out the next day and he he's dressed up as an alien and and he's like oh i know who oh who that was type of thing later comes out and apologizes and says you know i actually saw it too and i was trying to downplay what what we saw because nobody had answers for it um so that was an interesting thing of just like what could that have been in all reality so just I, I don't know what it is but it was it's a cool the phoenix lights is, are cool i'd look into that if you don't know um yeah the mighty ducks the mighty ducks quack 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 emilio estevez takes a ragtag group of kids and and turns them into the best hockey league in the world
Oh, yeah. I think it's just, it's all just top secret military testing. I think there's some crazy stuff that they're, they're testing that they don't talk about, whether it's um, a UFO, which is really just unidentified spacecraft, which I think is, is a lot of just military testing stuff that's gone out of hand. Um, But I think there's a lot of crazy stuff that we don't know. Like how can there not be? I mean, there's so much different stuff going on behind the curtains. Um, yeah, that's probably what it was. The Lockheed Martin Shunkworks is at Groom Lake, Nevada, or at least it was. I don't know what that is. Hmm. The Lockheed Martin Shunkworks. I don't know what that is. I'm going to put that in a new tab for later. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, space is cool. I can keep this in the last name. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the American West, like there's there's a pretty big conspiracy in Utah about um, Skinwalker Ranch. Have you guys heard of Skinwalker Ranch? This is one that I like talking about a lot because it's close by. But I've done a lot of like research on this um, because it's it's really it's interesting to me. But it's it's um, it's owned currently. It's owned by like this crazy billionaire. Um, that he he bought it from a farmer that was reporting all these issues um, of like there were some paranormal some um, some paranormal some like uh, UFOs like also throw in you know some crazy some crazy stuff with you know you know sasquatch and you know uh, dogs that are being evaporated not evaporated but like burnt uh crop circles um all you know but all this weird weird stuff and it that it's still there to this day like there's still this billionaire is like has his this huge giant research facility um, on this this land. I don't know if I like how these hands are painted. I'll just I'll paint those later. But it's it's really interesting. Oh.
Bigelow, yes, sold the ranch. Oh, he sold it, huh? In 2016, Bigelow sold the ranch. Ooh, I don't know that. I did know that um, before in 2012, Bigelow rented it out to the Department of Defense for a while, which is weird to think about. It's like the Department of this Defense's government stuff. Just throwing in a little bit of texture on this on this guy. Adamantium Holdings, that's crazy. Probably suspicious. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the new damn standard brush, this is like, I'm just getting all over the place. This is the new damn standard brush that's on his gum road. I highly recommend it. It is great. Well, I've got about three more minutes. Does anybody have any questions before I'm out for the night? Um, what software do I do topo in and renders? Um, I normally do 3D coat for retopoing. And then for renders, for quick renders, I'll do um, Keyshot. And I'll just drop this in without retopologizing or, or doing too much. But for final, like, polish stuff, if I can do some, some nice retopping and um, kind of do the full process with maps and everything. I'll actually take it into Unreal and and do some rendering in Unreal because it's really quite powerful. So those are probably my two main ones that I use. When's the next stream? Um, I will be back in two weeks. Um, to you know, two weeks on Wednesday again. And I think we'll probably try to keep this cadence for a little while where I'm, you know, two weeks a month so I can still work on some of my tutorials which are coming out. Oh, yeah. Let's just pimp those one more time. I do have tutorials again. Did you? Um, so that's, you can check those out. I have a new one coming soon, hopefully. I'll be able to show you some of that maybe uh, maybe next time. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. 
I'd really like to be done with it. So would my wife. <laughs> um, but this was fun. I think we had fun tonight, guys. So thanks for coming by and joining the stream. Uh, does, are you just using these streams to pump us up for research? For my, yes, that's exactly. It's all for my new conspiracy book that I'll be releasing very soon. <laughs> Okay, well, that's my time, everyone. So uh, thanks for coming by and for the questions and comments and for making this a fun time tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Goodbye. You guys are great. <laughs>